In this video, I want to talk about the concept of using more than one datum feature simultaneously. So this has had different names over the years, uh, and I put them up here. Right now, in the current tw ASME 2018 standard, it's called a common datum feature. And what I mean is when you have a letter, hyphen, letter, and they're in the same compartment. Before, in 2009 and 1994, it was called a multiple datum feature. And before that, in the 1982 standard, it was called a compound datum feature. No big deal. I mean, you can pretty well see what it looks like. Uh, it's kind of unmistakable. Now, there's really only two ways the ASME standard shows that this is to be used. I don't want to say that it's the only possible ways it can be used, but it only talks about two. One is with coaxial uh, cylinders, which I'll talk about right now, and the other is with uh, offset or parallel planes. So the coaxial cylinders, if you have, and this isn't a great example, but if you have a cylindrical part that's very long in relation to its diameter, it can be really difficult to simulate that. And it'd be difficult to make it too, right? If you have a shaft that's you know, two inches thick and five feet long, it's gonna deflect when you try to grab it with a chuck. It's also going to deflect if you try to just put this diameter in a V-block or collet or something to inspect it. So the idea is, functionally, if the part is going to need to be held in two places uh, to make it, it's probably going to be held in two places to function as well. So typically, a shaft is connected in two spots, right? The front and the back, or you know, the beginning and the end. It's not just hanging out there in space. So we'll reflect that on the drawing by identifying a diameter on this side as datum B, identifying a datum on this side as datum A. Now, it doesn't have to be external cylinders. It could be internal cylinders. They do make collets that expand uh, that can be used. Or it could possibly be machining centers. Now, this is not shown in the ASME standard, but in the Bruce Wilson textbook, it does explain a little bit about how you could possibly use it. It's not forbidden to use machining centers in the ASME standard, it's just not shown. So the idea there would be you would identify a machining center here, machining center here, and just like you would uh, make it between centers, you would inspect it that way as well. That's probably not the best solution because typically a machining center is not a functional feature. So there is a possibility that they made it one, they did one operation on machining centers and then did another operation with some other process and they're not uh, coaxial anymore. Uh, like these diameters, whether they're internal or external, they don't have to be the same size. Uh, it does make it much easier to check it because then you can use two identical V-blocks to hold it. Uh, I keep mentioning V-blocks. It is the easiest way to check this kind of thing. The idea is put it on the surface plate, uh, put this and this in V-blocks, and then you can just rotate it. The downside of V-blocks is if one of those diameters or both is lobed, it's going to make the part kind of jump up and down as you're trying to slowly spin it. The ideal way is to simulate the datum the way the ASME standard kind of says. You need a similar collapsing perfect cylinder here, and then simultaneously another similar perfect collapsing cylinder over here. That can be done. They do make precision like uh, uh, chucks and collets that you can put on a surface plate. Typically they're not that uh, big though. Uh, I, mean, I guess it depends on what size equipment you're, uh, you're working with. Now, one important thing to recognize here is that this datum feature develops an axis and this datum feature develops an axis. But together, it's a single datum axis. Datum axis A, B. It's a different entity than datum axis A. There could conceivably, if there's a more complicated part, be some other call out to just datum axis A, and that would be just here. When we call them out with this hyphen, 
it means they both develop one axis. And if you think about it, if you put this part in V blocks and spin it, it's spinning about one axis, not two axes. Now, you can use this with runout, position, and profile. It's very common to see runout for these kinds of parts because it's typically how they make them. So the idea is you turn this on a lathe or a turning center, and then while it's still held, you can run an indicator and check it, which is super convenient. Uh, if the tolerance is very, very small and it's got to be ground, then it's like a, a different kind of thing. But if it's an open tolerance, you can check it right on the machine. It doesn't even have to go to inspection necessarily. Now, when we use runout, of course, there's no MMC with the tolerance, and we cannot have an MMB, maximum material boundary, with the datum feature. Uh, that just means no matter what, you're supposed to have that collapsing datum simulator. Whether that you know, really happens in real life is another question, but that's what the drawing requires. If we use position, so if we use position, we have at the very least more flexibility. So we've got a cylindrical tolerance zone now. We're not checking the surface. We're trying to see if the axis of this large diameter is within a tolerance zone relative to datum axis A, B. Now, we can have a, a maximum material condition with the tolerance. So if this part comes in smaller, it's allowed more positional tolerance. And we can have maximum material boundary with our datum features, which means we can use a fixed gauge to check the part. So you don't have to do it this way with the MMB, but it can uh, provide flexibility for manufacturing and inspection. If you're going to make a, a million of them, you could conceivably make a gauge and have a robot check it instead of having to go through that whole process with the V blocks and spinning it slowly and you know getting everything set up. Now we can also use profile. I won't put it on the board. The difference with profile is that we can't have uh, MMC with the tolerance, but we actually could have MMB with a profile. So the datums can be at maximum material boundary. And then we typically have a basic dimension uh, for the diameter. Uh, in this position example, it'd be a, a plus or minus dimension. The profile would be the most restrictive, but it's something to think about. Maybe if you have cylindricity, you could kind of replace it with profile and, and get to a similar place. So next up, we'll talk about uh, offset uh, datum planes. So here I have an example of offset datum planes. It works the same if they're parallel. Uh, so if this was parallel to here, you could call them out separately, say if there's a gap between them. The trick here is that we've got to have a basic dimension showing the distance between those two parallel datum planes. And what we're trying to do here is not you know, simulate off of just datum A. We want it to kind of equalize between both. So I've called out a profile for this top surface. Uh, a and B forming a single datum plane. Now, I know it sounds weird because there's two datum planes, right? Well, what happens is because this is a basic dimension, the way we would imagine it being set up is we get a nice granite plate, we get a gauge block or some precision block set to the basic dimension as close as we can get it, and then we're going to put the part on there. So we're going to try to simulate this and move datum B up and create kind of a perfect plane. Now, as far as measuring it, you can choose either one to take your measurements from. And what I mean is, if we're just looking for, say, the overall height to verify the profile at the top of the part, we could touch off on the granite plate and come up, or we could touch off at the top of this block and then and then subtract it to get you know, the overall height from the granite plate or add it in to get the overall height from the granite plate. Um, it's a technique you can use. You'll get a different answer than if you did datum A then B, right? Uh, because then the part would need three points of contact on the first one. In this case, we could get two points here and one point uh, here. So if it's like a 
you know, this is like a little Omega clip. Uh, the idea is if we clamped it right here, it might you know, bend out into space. If it functions like this, where say it maybe is getting bolted down or something, this might be a way you want to go. Now, if they're parallel, you can do it two ways. You can identify one, two, or you know, A, B, call it out like this, or you can just have one profile and identify both surfaces as datum A. It accomplishes the same thing in either case. And then the last little bit, this only works for parallel or offset datums. We can't do it with datums that are perpendicular or right angle to each other. Uh, the reason is, if we do that, then we've got to pick sides. Let me show you what I mean. So if I had this little block with a hole in it, and I said, hey, this is datum B, and this is datum C, right, those uh, perpendicular surfaces, and now they're a common datum feature. Well, it's not clear which one gets two points of contact first if it's called out as datum A, B, and C, A being the, the flat part parallel to the board. So one inspector could set it up like this, the other inspector could push this side up against it first, and you get different measurements every time. Um, that do problem doesn't crop up as much when they're you know, offset datums or parallel uh, datums. So, <clears throat> That's the situations where you would see uh, A hyphen B or whatever letter you want to uh, use hyphen. Uh, so common multiple and compound datum features. Uh, there are other situations where you can use multiple datum features at once and I'll go over that in a separate video. It's in the same chapter, uh, chapter four of the ASME Y145. Uh, ASME Y145-2009, they're all kind of lumped together. So next time we'll talk about patterns of features of size at MMB and RMB. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think.